Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Uh, well, the next thing uh on the docket here, man. Um, so DJ Envy wife a, a couple of weeks ago, oh, I don't know. Very recently was like in the first ten years they were together, she had never had an orgasm, right? So <laughs> that already was like, damn. All right, just gonna put that out there. And he sat right beside her. It was like a Derek Jackson moment, but reverse. Like as she's talked about this, and he was just like. Yeah. Oh, huh. and you know, I and I, yeah, for 10 years, mm. they was together since they was like in high school. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. That, that yeah. makes things make, have more sense. Um, okay. Okay. That confused me even more. I was like Heineken on okay. expert opinion. Shout out to that podcast. Uh, I was like, okay, so if you went dead in, right now, the average I don't know how many she had been with before him, but I'm assuming it was a limited amount at that age, 14, mm-hmm. 14 especially back then in the nineties. Like that wasn't a, it wasn't a normal thing to have just a bunch of, it, it just wasn't the average. So, um, all right. You with him for all of them years, still with him. How, how did you have a, orgasm comparison chart how did you mm-hmm. know until you had one that you didn't have one and who gave it to you or how did you achieve it but DJ Envy was not the recipient of it but that's that's neither here nor there um, my actual question from that is if your long term woman said she never orgasmed with you. What would you do? And then from that, have you ever had to talk to a partner about sexual issues, whether it be issues you had with them, issues they had with you, or issues y'all had as a couple? And not necessarily from current relationships, just in your lifetime and your, you know, 30 odd years on earth. Well, a long term woman says she never orgasmed with you, but. I think the first thing I'll say is you a damn liar. <laughs> Girl, you know I was dropping this shit off in them drawers. God damn, stop. Stop. Stop perpetrating for the grab. Stop. I felt you percolating. You you want to you want to start a podcast? That's what you're doing. That's what you you trying to start a podcast. But that's just me in my situation. Because everybody else's situation is different. I'm still I'm still confused that that's 10 years. Like, y'all, like, as vocal as women are, have been, they are the most vocal they have ever been in the history of, of known history or whatever that I can attest to. Now, I don't know if it might have been a magical period in history where women reign with a strong um, iron fist. That's what I meant to say. But, uh, yeah, this is the most they have actually been vocal. So I'm like, how did she not say it? Like, you don't have girlfriends that, you know, like, you know, <clears throat> what's going on? Have you not seen Pornhub? Like, he, this- he didn't know. But, you know, maybe somebody else knew. But he didn't know. For 10 years. Maybe he's maybe she's just been buttering up his ego so much. Because he's he has a level of success, so he's just been riding that train for a while, and then now that she has a chance to open her mouth, she says something. I didn't mean to say open her mouth in a conversation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, okay, we're gonna dig into this. So, my first question: Were they each other's first? I don't. Is know. that a no? That right? I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna go on the premise that we were each other's first. Okay, if they were each other's first, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. 
And mm-hmm. if they were together from the first until 10 years, he's not mature on his sexual class because he's thinking he's doing what he's doing. And I'm doing it because this was I've been doing the whole time. And I think mm-hmm. to, to me, she's happy. And to her, this is a new experience. And you don't know what orgasm is until you start talking to somebody else and they tell you how it feels and how mm-hmm. you should feel. You're like, well, I never felt that way. But you didn't have this conversation until you were well into your grown woman age. So this whole time, y'all having kid sex as adults, not knowing y'all having kid sex, but not even have the conversation to each other that we still doing the same thing we were doing in teenagers. We in our twenties, we ain't doing nothing different. We ain't doing you. You still feel the same. You don't want to. You remember, like it comes with a, se- a different type of sexual maturity to have that type of conversation. You know, on both ends, be willing to open up and say how you feel, being willing to receive how that person feels, and also being willing to do something about that as well. Now, as far as the conversation, um, how would I react? Um, I think every man's ego is the natural natural reaction. Like, what the fuck you mean? You ain't, you ain't never had no orgasm. Shit, what the fuck? But then the, another natural reaction is, well, shit, I got mad. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean <laughs> it depends on the person. You know what I mean? It depends on how you how you feel about that person. Now, if it's a long-term relationship and she comes to you, I haven't had an orgasm with you or had an orgasm at all in 10 years. Um, me, myself, I may react in initial anger and then now, but then out of receiving it and knowing that you're willing to come to me in a positive way trying to get changed, if I'm all if I'm focused on making you happy and pleasing you, I have to receive that. And it's my job to be able to receive that in a positive way and do what I need to do to make that change. Now, have I had that conversation in my life with ex partners? Nope. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that, dr- that dramatic uh, pause, right? Right. Um, with the face. <laughs> um, now, I would say if my woman had came to me, told me that, um, for one, I would be more not pissed, but more like, why the fuck ain't you just say something? Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. I don't know. I guess for me, my ego ain't that big, and I generally have in my lifetime had the attitude that face had of like shit I don't really care if you do get yours now luckily I haven't had the experience of a woman like coming to me saying hey uh didn't work can you go a little longer or like I, I, I haven't <clears throat> experienced that one but I will say I have had to have conversations with a woman in my past about sexual issues um but more from my end to her like the dead fish syndrome, like I need you to participate. You can't just sit there and be a recipient and enjoy yourself. Like mm-hmm. yeah. the only yeah. action you provide cannot be when you busting. No, I need you to yeah. provide action before that so that I can be stimulated as equally physically. I can I can honestly I can honestly say that I know when I'm gonna have a trash performance. It's, it all depends on how much I actually give a damn about the performance. <laughs> I know when I'm gonna have a trash performance because I know for a fact that I, I'm, not, I'm not really into her like that. So, <laughs> so Girl, I'm not that type of thing. But yeah, exactly. So, and sometimes now, having a trash performance has saved me from dealing with the bullshit. <laughs> now, back in my heyday, in my um. Early door in my twenties, in my early twenties, um, as you said, you had the conversation with the lady about the dead fish. I was not give a fuck because once again, in that mentality, it's getting mad. You want to lay there like a fish? Cool. I'm gonna do you like a fish too. I'm gonna get mad and toss your ass back in the water. Um, but that was then. That was then. I've matured now. I'm married now, and I'm all about pleasing mine. Um. I'm gonna stop that conversation right there. But uh, back in my, uh, as Amber Rose would say, slut days, uh, male whore days, or my old M1 backward days. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really giving. Yeah, I, I was like a typical young male. Like, you really didn't give a fuck. But um, <laughs> shit, 
I was always doing my, what I need to do. I really, didn't, I really didn't feel the need to have those conversations. But once again, <laughs> at a certain sexual maturity, when it's all about the mutual pleasing and you getting the optimal about what you want as well, you'll be willing to have those conversations. So. Oh, man. Um, I had a moment in my life where it was just a good groove. Just a good groove. Every time it was like, I, 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 think, I think most most men, um, uh, most most men in the attractive realm who, who will fall in that realm have had those days in their in those college years or those years in that age realm, those age range when you were supposed to be in college or the with the 18, 24, 25, somewhere around there where you're in your exploration days and you're just sowing your wild oats, as you say. Sowing your wild oats. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no argument there, no rebuttal there. I definitely agree with you on the conversation piece too. Like, you should be mature enough at a certain age to have those conversations, but definitely 20-something-year-old me would be like, what the fuck is you talking about? I probably would have reacted to yeah. Pat like, yeah, you out your fucking mind. I know yeah. that. You, you can't lie about that. Damn it, your <laughs> is totally empty because that was a lot of damn uh, P after the P after the P. Well, you just pee whatever you want to fuck. Um, <laughs> have y'all ever had to fake an orgasm to get out of a sexual situation? Like, yes. Like, yo, all right, you, you got yours, but this is not working for me. I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. Uh, all right. Yep. That. Yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> mm hmm. I had a moment when they fell asleep on me. Uh, they had pop went right to sleep on me, and I'm like, no uh, woman that has ever had sex with me before, my wife. Don't watch this podcast. But I'm gonna tell you, I was a chronic fake nutter back in uh <laughs> early college years. That was a a go to for me, yo. Like. Man, yo, cause you, like you know, back then you young, mm -hmm. so you so you be you know you can go for however long you feel like I'm, you know, I ain't there. This ain't it. Ah, I'm gonna catch mine off the next girl. This ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, all right, go on. And then I would literally just go ahead to the next girl another night and just be the same night and be like, well, go ahead and get this one off. Oh, that's what I was looking for. And be like boop boop, but I was a, snap back I was, three thousand. I was good for like to like, cause you know back then we used to do the little contest and shit to see. All right, what well, what what's your number gonna be before the end of the first nigga? Don't you? I wish you would act like you. I wish I had fucking Barvis's number right now. <laughs> Renamed him. I wish. I brand new on this motherfucking podcast. Yeah, zoom in on me on this. Yeah, I wish you would act brand new on this motherfucking podcast. <laughs> Nigga, please. We're not talking about now. We is not talking about since we talk. You you know the the year range I'm talking about. We talking about 01 to about 04 ish, 05 ish, early 05 ish. Because by 05 ish, I had started to chill out for the most part. I was really kind of just relaxed. Like, I was, you know, it wasn't no crazy shit going on as much. I was trying to figure shit out. But, but that, that, that 01 to 05 run, boy, that shit, I'll, t I'll tell you the real year 03 to, 0, to late 04. There was a three semester period of like the contests. And he want to act like he didn't participate. But, nigga, you was trying to get your numbers up with everybody else. You was sitting there. Well, you know, I'm right. Nigga, I remember them nights coming back from it. Well, did you catch one in there? Yeah, I was over by the stove. Yeah, I was back there in Rod Room. <laughs> Where you at? He did the last. Where you at? Well, you know, I'm right. He did the two. Oh, I think he did the face laugh. Yeah, I'm at 26. God damn it. Let me call. Let me call. Let me call one arm strap girl. <laughs> one arm strap. I'm at Twitter. Let me go ahead and catch this, catch this quick ad to the. Like, please don't play these games with me, man. 
But back in those days, all I'm saying <laughs> is it was quite a few in those reindeer games that caught the empty ball special. Boy, you caught zero. You couldn't you couldn't have paid me to give you pre con it was it was literally just hard dick and bubble gum because there was nothing else. It was no substance. It was just blood, just blood and just blood and flesh. God bless you. I'm gonna say right now, um... TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it won't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I had, all to, I'm... I had to recognize my friend, <clears throat> and that was all me that time. I apologize, Pasqua. <laughs> Hey man, I'll, this is real. It's between three real friends, man. I I can't. I don't know what to tell you. All I'm going to say in that question, um, if I had to fake it, is uh, um, right now I don't have any children. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's all I got to say about that. I'm gonna tell you how far I've gone, though, bro. You know how you uh. Back in the day, you hit the pullout game, right? Mm-hmm. I've pulled out and had and, and and let some spit drop just to <laughs> do the warm wet effect of ah oh, yeah there you go you did you did that you did that you earned all of that I, I had a little lotion bottle <laughs> I I gave, mm, I gave you one no, that Grammy one. Award you, one you got to make sure it come out at the right at that ninety eight point six. Yeah, mm. I've definitely See you pull out and get a fake convulsion, and then grab the towel oh. real quick and wipe oh. it off. So she, oh, oh, you, oh, you, you went to the full, the full fledged. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this man what an awesome the Academy Award. <laughs> this nigga closed the eye. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go Oscar. all the way, way. You gotta go full Academy Award every day. Man. You gonna sell it? You gotta sell it. You even gotta sell it. See. Yeah. I've, and the nominees I've for the best. Before, make sure that it jumps in there though, so she can feel like something just happened. And oh, then yeah. and then just run to the bathroom real quick and uh, flush the condom. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, ain't throw it in the trash? I just wanted to make sure ain't nothing get on the, you know, I ain't wanna have to clean that up out the trash can later. But yeah, I want to make sure then you, then you add that. I gotta go outside and smoke a cigarette be back. I I'ma tell you how grimy I used to be back in the old do day in the old do days. Especially especially like mid to early old do, like prime power oh, pan dude. days. Oh, like, bro. like the, the I I boys, uh the, the tri the triad of just fuck a rib days where you had like I I then a, what was that other one? Boom. It was like the the Lloyd Jones. Yeah, I, 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 the Yo Jones, KJ. Yes. Okay. So, like the infamous, yeah, the little triad of trouble shit. The the, the buddy's birthplace. God damn it. Um, in those days, I was famous for I would take it to this this level of just fuckery. Because I was really good. Like part of my efficiency in those days was I never said nothing after the fact. So it would be like me, the girl, maybe face or chewy might know. <clears throat> Or, or some, or if it was like a girl I actually liked, then they'd know for sure. But like, if it was just something, they might know just because they know my patterns of them. Like, oh yeah, we know he going. But like, because I nobody would know, I would do this. I would do the fakery. Say I need to go smoke a cigarette or a black and mild. Walk out to the front and just go. <laughs> <coughs> And just go like the old 1940s dude, the, the old school 1940s divorce move, just uh I'm going to pack <laughs> cigarettes. Just, I see wouldn't see him wouldn't see him till the next day in the in the, uh in the goddamn uh in the in the student center shit. See him walking across okay. campus something like, hey, what's up? And give him a hug and everything. I like ain't nothing happening. But uh, 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 yeah, I, I was pretty. I was a fucked up individual back then. I ain't gonna lie. It was yes, yes. yes. I, I was a trifling dude. Like I am. Yes, we bad. were. Yes, I, we were. I had time to like process and get myself together before I met my wife. Like I had a good year to kind of like 
I went through some crazy shit. Had to remember the uh, the Brenda situation. Uh, yeah. Ooh. And that kind of turned me off to, oh, yeah, we might talk that we have might have to talk offline or that might have to be like a uh, buy me a coffee exclusive where you got to pay for that. that. That's a story that's different. Yeah, that's one of the uh, one of the I put it like this. You know, about, you know about the one, the one and then you know about the three that's not one of the three that not. That was yeah, that situation, but we'll talk Ooh. We'll talk, we'll talk when we hit when we, yeah, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, Try some shit I've done. Um, girl, cream, cash ruled everything around me. And I said, yeah, that, that, some of that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dollar, yeah. dollar bill, um, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Well, my last question, I guess, uh, so this becomes a uh, tell too much damn session. Mm-hmm. And say it already. And the pod squad get to know too much about me. See, luckily, I, I told my hotels to my wife when we, when we first got together so she would know. Hey, she, man. Was, she was on campus with some of them numbers. Well, I had, <laughs> somebody rolled up. I was like, oh, I know. It. Well, baby, um, before I met you, there was a lot going on in my life. I was in, I was in a very dark place. Um, <laughs> very dark, yeah, very dark place because the lights were off. Yo, yo, it was not a good place, yo. I, 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 yeah. Um, but my last question to y'all is could y'all be with a person long term? Like, say y'all had never met Chicken Sandwich Face, you had never met your wife, I had never been married. Could you be with somebody who had a trash sex game? No. I'd probably be a horrible human being. No, because I would not say sex game. That includes the head game. So you don't get like what it, it's sex and garbage, you. but I can at least get all no, nah, it's it's just all garbage. garbage. You know, I would have to, I would have either become a <laughs> chronic healer or a chronic masturbator. Um, I'm, I'm, way, I'm gonna, I don't want to be chronic anything. I'm gonna say no because I feel <laughs> like that's laziness. Like I feel like if you if you a woman, you trash. It's because you just lazy. You just try to get yours off, and you use the use the female equipment uh, equivalent of a minute man. And I feel like you're disrespecting me because I'm like, all I'm gonna think is, all right, if we break up and you go somewhere else, and I find out you doing all kinds of shit, backflips, all kinds of shit, I'm gonna be like. All right, so where was that? We would have been where together. We would have did that. Shit, <laughs> you know what what fucking Randy Boss when he left the Raiders and went to the Patriots. This nigga turned back into a superstar. Nigga, fuck. You ain't even showing <laughs> practice with me. How the fuck you giving this damn fifteen hundred yard effort on the field? God right, damn it! Now, now I gotta go. Like that with me, man. Now, now I gotta go do some disrespectful stuff so you will know was was. <laughs> <laughs> what you listen, where your best friend at? You done hurt me, woman. <laughs> you hurt me, bitch. <laughs> Lucky you don't got no sisters. <laughs> Where's your mama? Speaking of old dude days. <laughs> <laughs>